Michelle. Yeah, you know, we continue to talk about Elsa as a category one hurricane, 75 mile an hour wind still at this hour. So I was hoping to see some drop in that speed from eight o'clock, but the latest advisory still holds as it did at eight o'clock. It's still moving to about north of 14 miles an hour and sustained winds 75 miles an hour. Look at this. It's just off the coast of Sarasota right now and Tampa. It'll be impacting these communities for another few hours at least. You can see this tropical model shows us that the track is likely also to go just east of the triad as we take a closer look for Thursday. So right now that's the current thinking with this storm. All right, the wider view showing you that we've got those heavy rains in place and with those heavy rains come the showers and the thunderstorms. The threat of tornadoes also across much of winds uh, western Florida all the way east toward Orlando. So this is covering much of the state tonight for concern. 70 mile an hour winds earlier with Key West. You can see that earlier this morning. Marco Island also getting on some of the gusts and then continue to increase. And as we've got you in Sarasota right now, 40 mile an hour winds just about 8 o'clock up to 54 mile an hour gusts at this hour. We could see some of those hurricane force winds or at least a gust or two make it inland. But at this hour, we're hopeful that as it may graze land between Indian Rock Beach and Tampa in the next few hours, we may see the system lose a little bit of its punch and hopefully with that friction and moving over land will lose a little bit of the intensity with the winds. But right now it's about 64 miles to the southwest of Tampa and about an hour and 49 minutes from that center of the storm should it continue to roll right up along the coast. And we expect to see a couple of grazes not only near the Tampa area, but then again clear water and heading out towards Cedar Key. So it could do a couple of bumps along the shore and then moves inland with that storm surge. And then for us by Thursday morning, still now forecast to be a tropical storm instead of dropping down to depression status and the possibility of some heavy rain and wind mainly to the east of the tribe. Now can't rule out that we're not going to see some good so soaking rains for folks in Burlington and Ashford, but I think there may be some have nots for us. The good news is the system wraps out pretty quickly down to a tropical depression status as it moves northeast out toward Nova Scotia. You can see Sarasota right now, showers and thunderstorms on this particular track. This is our RPM model suggesting that yes, at least it's going to graze the eye of the storm here continuing over Tampa, Sarasota tonight, then Cedar Key and across through Lake City by tomorrow afternoon. It's lifting out of Florida into Georgia, up through Brunswick, and then notice central parts of Charleston, South Carolina, of course, impacted by some of the winds, but Columbia and then Florence could get some very heavy rain. We may be looking at some flash flooding, not only for South Carolina, but also for the eastern sections of the tri through the triangle out through Raleigh. We got heavy rains just west of Fayetteville that will lift in as we get you up through Greenville and showers and storms could also produce an isolated severe thunderstorm here and there. So especially if it maintains that tropical storm status, we're looking at storm surge flooding potential from areas there along the Crystal River and for us, our concern could be some beach erosion and the high surf and those heavy rain conditions that will develop all across eastern parts of the state from Raleigh out toward uh, Emerald Isle area and also through Atlantic Beach. You can see Venice here through Port Charlotte. The heaviest of rains right now continue to track in and we're going to be looking very carefully for those winds and any change in this track that could have it wobble a little bit farther west that could impact folks in Winston-Salem and Greensboro with higher rainfall totals. Now we expect some two to four inches to pour into areas of Raleigh and then up along the corridor heading out through Columbia and Wilmington area. So showers and thunderstorms for us a concern, but also watching the winds, the southern beaches. So from Charleston out through North Middle Beach, we can see some of those gusts really come up as we get you into Thursday morning as that storm in the eye is passing in the center and just to the west of these areas. The northeastern quadrant is the strongest, so 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts not out of the question for areas like Oak Island and Bald Head Island. These are the folks who might see some of the stronger winds and then to the north and east. You notice we might get in the 15, 20 mile an hour range in the triad on this track. Folks though east could get anywhere from 35 to near 40. Not so bad with the winds for the Carolinas, but certainly a bad deal when it comes to the possibility of flash flood warnings that might impact three or four states as this now hurricane continues to track and likely as a tropical storm over the next couple of days. All right, let's talk about the showers and the thunderstorms with our winds and the rain the next couple of days we could see anywhere from a half an inch up to an inch and a half and those heavy downpours will bring in some cooler temperatures temperatures for us to at least low 80s, we believe, as we get you in toward the end of the weekend. All right, we'll talk more about those lower 80s as well, and we'll bring you that seven day forecast as soon as I can get up for you. Here you go. 90 degrees on your Wednesday impact day Thursday and upper 80s to 90 and more impact day Sunday and Monday.